Hey guys, in this episode, I want to tell you a famous in Japan story where I was having fans recognize me on the street and how this all happened and how you can blow up your career as well. Let's go. I spent the last 14 years playing over a thousand shows, touring 22 different countries and become a top 40 billboard charting artist. I fired my record label to go out on my own as an independent artist to market and release my own music, selling thousands of albums and millions of streams. The question I always get is, how did I do it without a label and sell even more music? This podcast is here to show you the way. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply and share marketing strategies to grow my music business in a loyal fan base. So hey guys, um, I got another Japanese story for you And you know what, I honestly owe my Japanese fans everything for my career Because I might not have had a career if it wasn't for my fans in Japan That found me and you know, I ended up selling hundreds of thousands of albums there And this all happened because of one song It didn't happen because of an album, it happened because of one song, and that song was Impossible. Okay, it's a rock song I wrote with my buddy Trev and Adam. Um, It's today still actually one of my biggest songs. And what's interesting is, is I was signed to a label at the point that had distribution through EMI, which is now owned by Universal. And so basically, you know, what they do is, is these international arms of EMI will look at these indie labels and say, oh, what's this? What's this? And they must have come across my record. And one of the A&Rs in Japan said, oh my gosh, this is, this is awesome. This guy sounds like Linkin Park meets Eminem. And so what they did was is they imported 10,000 of my record and, and did a little soft release. And those sold out in a week. And then they imported another 10,000 and those sold out in a week. And then another 10,000 and then they ended up doing like an official release out there of my album glory and the interesting thing is is they wanted me to shoot a music video right away for the song impossible because that was the song that was really connecting and blowing up and i want you to understand it is songs that sell albums it is not albums that sell albums it is a song that sells an album they didn't tell me to make music videos for all the songs in fact we only had one other music video for uh, I think that album which was Runaway that was on that record but it was just that one song and that was the one they pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed now that song is a hit globally like it's just it's a good song it's a hit song but what's interesting is the label even though they're based in the US and now we're having all this success in Japan you would think that they would now push it in the USA and you know really go really hard with it but of course they didn't and they just sat and and rode the the tailwind of uh, Japan okay and eventually you know Japan did uh, keep going for like I don't know another three or four records it did really really well there and my career is not um, as big there anymore we still have fans there but it's nothing like it used to be when we first went there I would be walking to the club and get recognized on the street by fans i'd be recognized in the tower records and have fans at the hotels and all that stuff it was it was just a crazy time of my life and just so you know that didn't happen on my first record didn't happen on my second didn't happen on my third it happened on my fourth record okay two records independently and then two with the label and it was the second record um with the label that did well and understand that the label that I actually signed with isn't the one that really pushed it. It was it was the A and R guy that was really just passionate about rock and hip hop that found me and decided to push it. And this is the thing, though: whether you have a hit song or you think you have a hit song or, or songs or whatever, it doesn't matter unless nobody hears it. Okay, like if this guy in, in Japan didn't tell and release it and market it in Japan, I never would have had the fame. I never would have had the success. And honestly, I might not even be here today recording this podcast for you because I was literally on the verge of quitting. You know, it was my fourth record. I'd been touring like my face off. I was going broke, um, really struggling because I didn't know how to market my music and I signed my rights away to a label that weren't really pushing me properly in the U.S. And you know what? 
the thank God for, for great music. And, you know, I had a really great producer and people that I wrote with. And, you know, we had a, we caught a really amazing break. But this is what's interesting is when I got my record back, okay, because I signed this thing that's called a licensing deal. And I've talked about this before, but a licensing deal is where I give the rights to a label for a set term, which was seven years. I let them have access to my record for seven years to have complete control over it not including the publishing, just the master, by the way, and I'm not going to get into the details of that, but I owned my publishing still because I wrote the song and so did my other two friends. We didn't sign that away. But um, they had rights for seven years. But then when I got that record back... I started still marketing that song in the U.S. And that was still a song that I performed at shows. It was a real staple in my set because it was a big song. And to this day, I still perform it live because it's, it's a big song for me, right? Um, but now I've spent an additional, you know, $40,000, $50,000 on advertising online to, um, to make it a hit for me still. And now the majority of my revenue is the USA for that song because I marketed it because I got eyes and ears uh, on the song to hear it, all right? And we've got tens of thousands of shares on social media for it and millions of views. And I think people have uploaded it over 10,000 times on YouTube, okay? What do I mean by that? I mean, people have used that song in some video that they've created, whether it's an anime video or some crazy video, but, you know, over 10,000 different people have uploaded it on YouTube. So it continues to generate income that way. And I talk about all this stuff and monetizing and all that stuff in Fanbase University. But the point I'm trying to drive home is, is even though I had a hit song in uh, Japan and, and it was a hit and it could have been a massive hit in the USA, but it didn't start to get any traction until it was marketed. And that's what I'm trying to drive home. You've got to market it and get it out there. And I did. We didn't market every single one of the songs on the record. We market the hit. Okay, my ego isn't so big that, oh, well, what about this song and what about that song and, and whatever. And, and I look at it like this. If someone becomes a fan, they'll dig in and they'll, and they'll find the other songs and they'll listen to the other songs. And the songs that are hits, you know what, those will rise to the top. People will find those. They'll view them. All right. But there's the ones that, you know, if they're already getting traction and they seem to be working, then, then pour the fuel on the fire and make it happen. And the ones that don't, don't push them. We had another song off of a record that I released just a year or two ago, a couple of years ago, uh, called Stones, and the title track Stones did amazing at rock radio, and it blew up, and honestly, that's, that's what they sh the label should have done with Impossible years ago, but they didn't, but then after we had the success of Stones, we're like, okay, let's, let's release another song off the record, and we, we didn't have that much data yet, and I kind of thought we should have gone with a different song, but we went with this one song called House of Cards, ended up getting like... Um, higher in the charts um, on the billboard charts but it did terrible on sales um, fans didn't really connect with it that much it didn't get all the crazy response that we had hoped I thought it was dope and whatnot but you know what there was another song that didn't even hit the charts that ended up getting more streams more views and just a way better response overall and we spent zero dollars on it it just rose to the top on its own okay and so what we should have done is that's the song we should have taken to radio. And honestly, I spent a lot of money on that song, um, House of Cards, to try and get that, you know, to the charts and all that stuff. But because this one radio station didn't add it, um, called Octane, um, which is a Sirius XM um, active rock um, radio station, they, they played it a little bit, but they didn't play it nearly as much as they played my other song, Stones. And so we didn't have much sales. And even though we had higher chart positioning, um, the song just didn't, didn't do its thing you know and what do you do you, you know you, you don't give up but you you go to radio with another song and you keep swinging but you got to look at the data and see what your fans are telling you and choose but sometimes you don't have that data and you just got to swing but again that's why i love um social media marketing so much is because you don't have to commit to tens of thousands of dollars right away you can test stuff and see what's getting the shares see what's getting the views test different songs and videos and the one that's taken off put all your money into that one don't split it put all of it into the one that is working and go crazy with it that's that's what you should do all right um it's not about splitting your focus across the whole record because 
uh, it's not about um, albums don't promote albums. It is songs that promote albums. And you only need one hit song off of a record to sell millions. Okay? I'm, I'm being dead straight. I remember I was in the movie theater seeing the movie The Matrix. And after The Matrix was over, um, a song by Rage Against the Machine played. And I was like, what is that song? I need to find it. I have to have it. And this was before Spotify and Apple Music. And I went and bought the CD. And I think it was like a double disc soundtrack CD and had a whole bunch of songs I didn't even really care for. It did actually have another song by P.O.D. I really liked. But really, I bought it for that one one song. And I ended up getting two songs I really liked. But um, this is the thing. People will go... go uh, searching and on a hunt for for you if they find a song that they, that really impacts them so it's the song that matters and let me ask you do you have a hit song do you have a smash song that you know like okay if you were to sit down with me you'd be like chris you got to hear this song this is this is my hit or you'd be like oh i want to play you this one and i want to play you this one and i want to play you this one and like oh check out this one this one's cool you know no do you know what do you know what's your hit you know what your hit is when you do have that opportunity. And if you don't have a hit, your goal should be going to freaking write a hit and making a hit with a producer or c- collaborate with a songwriter and, and, and have a hit because you only need freaking one. And then market the junk out of that and blow it up. And then guess what? Then you write another one. You know, it's not about albums and your ego and you trying to write all these freaking songs. You know, like what I, I'm working on a songwriting book right now how to write a song and what amazes me is that say a band or an artist has a budget of 10,000 they'll try and like make 10 songs for a thousand bucks each and like really spread it out and get as much done as opposed to making you know three or five songs for two grand each hire a better producer maybe get some collabs in there and 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 make five amazing songs but no you you they want to make a whole album you know and, and and get all caught up in, in, in the numbers as opposed to the, the quality. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. No one cares about, you know, like, remember that album by um, Sum 41 that was uh, all killer, no filler? <laughs> and that's the thing, man. People don't want filler. They want killer, man. They want, like, some really good songs. And that's why it's better just to dig in deep and write the freaking hit, pay extra to work with that amazing producer that's got a track record that can deliver the goods. But no, you want to work with Joe Schmo down the road because he gave you a deal and then you can get the whole record you're done and get it done on the cheap and then you wonder why nobody buys it and then you spent all your budget across 10 songs and now you have no money to uh, market it and then but 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 you justify that in your heart you justify that that's okay to spend the, all the money on the record and then you won't even spend any money on your education on learning how to market it i was calling out some students that were on my 10x your fan base challenge and uh, i was saying why do we justify you know, spending money on the music, but we can't justify spending money on marketing and learning and growing to get it out there. But we're okay for our songs just to do crap. And it's because we're, 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 because it's our ego. And when we're okay with, you know, just making another song, it makes us feel like we're doing something, but we're not doing something. It's the same thing. You justify making a music video and you spend thousands and all this time and on your stupid outfit that nobody cares about. And then you'd have no money left over to market it. When really you should have just, you know, gone a little bit more simple. Um, first of all, you should have made a hit song and you should only be making a music video for an absolute smash hit song. Okay. Um, and then, you know, you could have uh, just had a better creative idea and then have some budget to get that video out there, you know, but again, you had to do a whole album. And so you have barely any budget for marketing, any budget for a good video. And then you wonder why you're not moving forward. And then you see one guy over there with just one smash hit song. He has way more followers than you, more monthly listeners, because they've got the hit song that everyone wants to listen to. And you've got an album that nobody wants to listen to. Are you picking up what I'm putting down here? Are you smelling what I'm trying not to step in <laughs> as I walk? I hope this encourages you and doesn't discourage you, but um, it's, it's all about the song, my friend. It's all about the song and getting that hit song and then marketing that song or else nobody will ever hear it. And I want people to hear it. I want you to have a fan base. 
do not forget to join us on fanbaseuniversity.com. Join my coaching program if you want more help and honest feedback and helping you market your music. Go to fanbaseuniversity.com. That's my coaching program on the 12th and 24th. And as I am recording this, the price, I think, probably has already gone up and it will be going up again. So I encourage you to get in, lock in your rate right now, and hopefully I'll see you on the coaching calls. Have an awesome day. I want to remind you that a fighter isn't someone who never fails. A fighter is someone who never quits. So if you're a struggling artist and you're just trying to figure out this music industry, you want to go full time with your music, you want to get noticed on social media or learn how to launch an album, an EP, or just get your music more marketed out there, I want to encourage you to check out my coaching program called Fanbase University. Every single month, I jump on the phone two times with my students and I coach them and I teach them how to market their music, how to get noticed, how to handle booking agents, record labels, and just get their music out there. Also, you get access to exclusive training, you get in interviews with music industry professionals. If you want to find out more and not do this on your own, not struggle because I've wasted thousands of dollars on my career and I, now I want to coach other artists. Check out my program, FanbaseUniversity.com or click the link below to find out more info.